y'all, it's the Muscled Magpie here. Today we're going to go into a little bit of an in-depth conversation about my personal emotional struggle over the last seven months. It's been difficult. There's been a lot of changes and I just decided that if I'm going through it, somebody else probably is too and it's time to talk about it. All right, let's get into this. So this is actually kind of a funny story to me anyway, because who in the hell would think that rapid weight loss is what's going to lead somebody to, I don't know, stop taking a whole bunch of shit from other people? Like, who would think that something as stupid as losing weight would trigger an emotional upheaval of this magnitude? I mean, you guys, I have lost weight before. I have lost weight a lot of times before, lots of times, significant amounts of weight. And, and then I would put it back on every time and then some. So this is, um, it's not the same this time. It's been very different. I mean, the weight loss before was never this fast. That's true. But it's not like I've never lost weight before. I have. So, uh, I just wasn't prepared for the emotional upheaval, I think. Um, I wasn't prepared to be able to deal with the emotional upheaval either, but I was, so that was nice. Um, just like when you're going through something as different, it's, it's a metamorphosis, you know, you're, you're changing yourself rather than wrapping myself in layers of a cocoon i'm stripping myself of layers of fat but the process ends up being the same where i am becoming somebody completely different and i ca- i keep saying to people you know and in my my blogs and my journals you know i am not who i want to be so i'm working to become capable of becoming the person I want to be and the amount of change that I have undergone in the last seven months I think that the person I want to be is very soon going to be the person I am and I'm very excited about that um but it's an emotional process you guys there's there's really no way for me to explain to somebody how to lose weight fast without first telling them why I don't recommend losing weight this fast Um, I mean, trauma, you know, it's weird because you want to heal from it just as much as you want to cling to it because it's comfort. You know, this trauma, this is your trauma. You are intimately aware of everything about this trauma. So it's hard to give it away, to give it up, to stop clinging to that part of your identity all this mental trauma um that people deal with in their lives all this stuff that's piling onto our bodies and everything in my opinion at least in my personal experience it's only a side effect of the mental trauma but it is a powerful side effect because how our bodies look become a huge part of our identities as well so we've got our identity is rooted in how we look, our body style, how society says we have to look. So we change ourselves to try to be thinner or we say, screw that, we're going to start a body positive movement. Or we say, I don't care about being skinny, I want to be strong. Because there's just all of your identity, you know, your bodies are so different. And any kind of mental trauma that you have on it, any kind of like, excess weight or I honestly believe that the issues I was experiencing with my depression and my anxiety and my weight at the same time were very closely linked I think that there were an integral part of each other my depression kept me home my anxiety kept me home. 
the dopamine I needed was provided by Instacart, which could bring me donuts. <laughs> I mean, like... All of the emotional shit that I have going on up here has very clear effects on my body when I don't deal with that emotional shit. Um, it's just... <sighs> healing, for me, is going to be a work in progress, is what I'm going to say, because it's definitely not done. Because there's, there's so much anger inside of me. I'm so angry at people. I have done the respect your elders thing for 30 years. But like, I'm tired of biting my tongue. And I, I gave these people power over me because I love and care for them. But they took that power and they used it against me to harm me and and everybody knows this they all have people in their lives that have harmed them in some way um it, it's especially people that you love so it's really really difficult to deal with that and you know one of my ways to deal with it is to turn around and eat a donut and then turn my cheek and eat another donut <laughs> so that's what i did like the issue I think that I had the most was that the people in my life who hurt me so irreparably, they refused to admit it. But not only, they, they just wouldn't even talk about it, guys. Like, not just wouldn't admit it, they would not even listen to me talk about it. And, and that's fine. I used to need them to admit it. I used to need them to acknowledge it but now I'm comfortable enough in the reality of my healing pro like the process of my healing that my knowledge of the truth is enough and I no longer have to give them my respect nor do I have to accept the disrespect of anybody else family or friend I am worthy of love and respect and kindness and honestly guys once I believed that I was worthy of love and respect and kindness and I didn't just like oh god okay so you know the term fake it till you make it well mantras are kind of like that when you have a mantra you just say it every day until finally you believe it one day and honestly my mantra was that you are worthy of love. You are worthy of kindness. You are worthy of goodness. You are capable. You know, all these wonderful affirming things. That was my mantra. But it was just a mantra. I didn't believe it. And none of this weight, like none of this weight started dropping off until I did believe it. Until I did accept that I am worthy and that that means that it's okay for me to work through some of these mental things that I have been blocking out since a very long time ago um yeah <laughs> um what i want you guys to understand though is like the weight it dripped off sure but i would say that every single pound i have lost represents a moment of abuse that i just had to work my way through does that make sense like each time I get on the scale and, and I see that I have won my battle um, I'm very proud of myself because I mean there was a lot of abuse in my life um, and I'm not going to get into it but there was a lot and so the trauma that I had and have and I'm dealing with um it seems like every time I lose weight I have kind of overcome a little bit of that trauma and so I have lost 110 pounds and that is 110 moments of abuse that I have kicked in the face and said fuck you you don't own me <laughs> Um, so that makes me feel pretty amazing. Um, 
but at the same time I still have 110 pounds to go until I reach my goal weight and that is super intimidating like oh so intimidating not because of the weight either just because the emotional upheaval I'm gonna have to deal with as I'm going through that weight it's not fun it's not pretty it's not cute it's a lot of crying and dealing with memories that are coming up from a past that I had blocked from a long time ago and not just that but dealing with urges to binge it is 1204 on Monday the 25th 2019 a.m. and I am on my period and I am reading this script so that I can get this video out to you guys and and really discuss like it took me a long time to write this but uh and I'm going off track right now because I, I want you to see a little bit of of the real rawness here it is 12 midnight and I am craving something but I'm not hungry and so I am fighting with myself this battle and of course I'll win because I am very strong and strong-willed and refuse to lose but it's always a battle you know it I'm fasting till tomorrow at 11 I've got 10 hours left in, or 11 hours left in my fast I'll be fine I had plenty of fuel today it's scary and it's hard to always stay cheerful and happy and peppy uh, when I'm dealing with so much emotional shit. I have been really melancholy a lot, not on purpose. Like I try to be energetic and have a lot of good energy for my friends and whatnot, but it's hard sometimes. Uh, you're tired and, and you're dealing with all these emotionally draining memories and experiences and feelings and whatnot. And so it's difficult. It's just, I don't want to annoy people with a poor, poor me routine. Oh no, poor girl, she lost 110 pounds. QQ, you know, but it has been a little bit of a traumatic experience. <laughs> so I've just been trying to deal with it myself. <clears throat> but a very interesting point was made to me today by a friend who is dealing with her own weight loss journey. And it was uh, that it is shocking to suddenly be smaller different less massive or skinny or whatever you want to call it when you have identified as an overweight or big beautiful or yeah I love my curves kind of woman your whole life and then suddenly you don't have those curves anymore and your whole body changes shape and like your desires change, your dreams change, your wants change, even the types of things that you just normally think about on a day-to-day -day basis change. You come so much more alive. Your whole... <sighs> it's a little scary at first. Okay, so like... For example, <clears throat> I used to love food, guys. Loved food. But, like, not real food. We're talking, like, breads and pastas and brownies and cakes and donuts and fried pies and sweets and snacks and treats. Ah, oh, all kinds of treats. I loved them. They're so good. Salty, chocolatey, whatever candy. I wanted it in my mouth. Now... I cannot even handle the disgustingly sweet smell of a candy bar. It makes me sick to my stomach. And I actually wonder how I survived as well as I did for 30 freaking years with like almost no freaking nutrition. Like, I guess that multivitamin was stronger than I anticipated, you know? <laughs> the problem is I'm just so different and like... It's not that I don't appreciate curves. I love my curves. My old curves especially were amazing. Uh, I had some body con dresses. Y'all, I was like, oh, bam. Oh, hot. But, like, it was dangerous. 
for me because like my heart was my blood pressure was always high my joints were always inflamed my health was not good guys I was constantly sick and icky and gross and whatnot and like it was just dangerous and I left that life behind for a reason and those foods behind for a reason because I wanted to be better and I think I am better it's been a wild ride like I cannot express to you the intensity with which my brain took the decision to be better. It wasn't just for my physical health. It seemed like it was for my mental and emotional health as well. Like, and again, y'all may not know, but uh, I've actually been on antidepressants for about a year and a half now. And other than marrying Lee, this is the best decision I have ever made. Um, I don't know if anybody else is on antidepressants, but I'm on Citalopram. So if you are, let me know what you're taking down below. We can have a little celebration of our store-bought neurotransmitters in the comments. What, what? Store-bought meme is fine here. Um, the reason that this is a thing for me is because when I was a child, uh, in some very fundamental ways, I was broken. And... I'm not Humpty Dumpty. I put myself back together just fine, but I didn't have any gold <laughs> at the time. Uh, so some of my cracks were just filled with toothpaste and gravel. It still counts as Kitsungi to me because the gold I was repairing was myself. Um, it may not be watertight, especially when I cough. But it's definitely a magnificent vessel, nonetheless. Now I'm at a point in my life where I can finally go back and clean out the toothpaste and gravel and refill those cracks with gold. But it is a painful process. It is like going and getting a deep tissue massage and having them break up every piece of scar tissue that you've ever had. And I don't know if any of you guys know, but I have a lot of scar tissue <laughs> so um physically and emotionally and i am proud i think that i am at a place now where i feel safe enough to open up my oh, open up my cracks again and then refill them it does lead to some emotional outbursts but i think they're all necessary so far because the emotional outbursts have been in defense of people i love so I'm okay with it for the most part. <sighs> it's not easy. It's messy. It's sometimes sharp, but it's always painful. And I truly believe that I personally am only able to do this because of keto. This is me personally. I cannot recommend keto to anybody because I don't know your body or you or anything about you. I can only tell you that it worked really well for me. I can tell you that I am five seven and a half. I can tell you that I started out at 360 pounds. I can tell you that I have depression. I have anxiety. I come from a broken home. I have heart failure in my family. I have liver failure in my family. I have diabetes in my family. I have thyroid. I could not give you one 100% correct reason why this diet worked for me at this time. I can't. Other than I've never looked at it as a diet. It's not when is my next cheat day. I don't ever wonder when I can have a cheat day. Because for me, I just don't have cheat days anymore. I just don't. It's not a problem for me. If I go on vacation, I plan things. It's not a cheat day. It's a planned dietary adjustments <laughs> and that's it's been pretty big um I hadn't had that relationship with food until keto and having a good relationship with food forced me to confront a lot of my binging behaviors which was 
difficult. <laughs> is difficult. It's I wonder if y'all can hear my cat cleaning herself behind me. I don't know if it's being picked up on the microphone or not. <clears throat> um, like, oh, for example, I am about to go on vacation with my best friend. My husband is not coming. He is staying here with the animals, which is cool. But a year ago, I would never have been able to do this. The reason I am confident enough to do this now is because I have worked through so much of my personal shit that I no longer require constantly being in my safe harbor. Lee, you know. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, he's my safe harbor. But, like, I can always go back to him, but I am still allowed to travel. You know, like, my heart, mind, soul, whatever is mended enough that I don't need to be you know, and protected from choppy waters anymore. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't even know if that's like the right, cause it's like, I'm a homebody for the most part, but I often wonder, like, comment down below, is anybody else a homebody with wanderlust? Because like, I love to stay home and get under my covers and snuggle into my couch and just relax. Have a nice, chill, calm night, day, whatever, and never leave. But then sometimes I get struck by the deepest desires to just travel. Let me know down below. That would be cool. What is the f number one place you'd like to visit one day? All in all, I'd recommend that if you are losing weight, you should try to lose weight slowly. It's, it's, like I said, it's more than just the physical changes. You also have to deal with the huge mind fuck when you think about it. Like, you have to change everything. The way you dress, the way you have sex, the way you shower, the way you eat, the way you even breathe, the way you take a piss. It Everything changes. You're literally changing who you are as a person. You are becoming the person that you want to be while still being the person that you are. And it's like really confusing and difficult and whirling emotions everywhere. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot to process. Um, <laughs> anybody else really hate being anxious all the time? Comment down below what your favorite suit uh self-soothing method is because I'm over here like calm down sir calm down I know it's got a lot of anxiety in it but it's okay as I'm stroking my little necklace all right everyone all right everyone that's really all I have time for today but never fear your regularly scheduled uploads will continue Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays next week I will be joined by the beautiful gym bird Stephanie where we will discuss a host of issues including but not limited to so I hit my target weight what now um I hit my goal weight and then I swelled right back up again and passed that weight or uh my friend is losing really fast and I don't know how to deal with it or I'm losing really fast and I'm worried that it's going to affect my friendships. Okay. Anyways, I hope you'll join us you guys next huh? Anyways, I hope you guys will join us next time. We like to keep it real as we can here and I hope it helps you. Remember, you are never alone and you are important. Thank you for being with us and you have a beautiful day. All right. Cool. <laughs>